So um, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag, to the flag, to the flag of the United States of, of, the America, United States of America, and to the Republic, to the Republic for, which for which it stands, one nation, under, one God, nation indivisible, under God, indivisible, with liberty, with and, liberty justice all. and justice for all. All right, I'd like to um, make a motion to approve the police commission agenda as written. Second. Julie? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, okay. um, any announcements? I have no announcements. And um, if no one else does, I'd like to. Um, uh, let's see, is, is uh, Matt Ryan here? Okay, so let's, um, let's wait a minute. We'll, um, we'll hold off on that. I'd like to um, uh, go on to public input. Um, so in order to keep the background door no noise down, everyone is uh, muted. People attending via video can use the raise their hand function to make a comment. Um, and we'll call on you. And if you're dialing in, you can do star nine. We'd like to keep comments to uh, two minutes. And um, so we, we have a lot to do tonight. So if anyone would like to make a public comment, please raise your hand. Maggie's raising her hand and Harper. Okay. And Edgar. <clears throat> yeah, I'm trying to unmute them here. Harper? I think you're unmuted. Yeah, hi, thank you. Sorry, I'd planned for three minutes, but I'll try to keep it short. Um, I um, would like to know specifically about the status of the Police Reform and Reinvention Collaborative. Um, first, how do we learn about the PRRC's meeting schedule? A friend happened to see a note in today's paper saying that there was a public meeting today, but by then it was already over. Uh, I was on the PRC webpage yesterday, and there is no mention of today's meeting, nor is there anything listed on the official PRC calendar. Five days ago, when I tried to email the official PRC email address as listed on your website to ask this question, the email bounced back and said the account didn't exist. Where can we find this information? Two, have any further members been appointed to the collaborative, or will it stay as just the core five? Three, has the collaborative come up with a timeline that differs from or is more detailed than what is presented in Executive Order 203? And four, where will the minutes be posted? I also noticed that the agenda for the town board meeting includes discussion of hiring more officers for the NPPD. What is the rationale for hiring more officers right now? Is this a part-time officer to replace a full-time? Otherwise, it seems both irresponsible and insulting in the face of local and national calls for divestment while there are impending state funding cuts and decreased local revenue because of the virus that virtually guarantee there'll be a budget crunch, and while there's an ongoing review of the New Paltz Police Department and its budget, how can the board be considering right now to plan to add new officers? New Paltz is spending at least $10,400 a day on police. The current police budget is already more than the total spent on the highway department, the fire department, the library, youth programs, the ambulance corps, public health, the loop bus and the rail trail combined. Nine of the 10 highest paid town employees are police officers. On top of this, at least three other agencies operate in New Paltz, the University Police Department, the Ulster County Sheriff's Office, and the New York State Police, not to mention ICE. In 2018, the last year of publicly available data, the New Paltz Police Department made only 20 arrests for violent crimes. This is fewer arrests than there are officers. Over the last five years, crime has steadily decreased. So it's hard to understand the rationale for needing more armed officers, especially because of lack of transparency surrounding the police budget and operations. Will you make the police call log, the police blotter, publicly available so that we can see what officers are doing with over $2.8 million? And if you refuse to gather and share this information, which should already be available, can you explain why? Whatever money might go to a new officer could be better spent in so many ways in New Paltz. What about giving it to family where they've been providing food to people affected by COVID. At very least, there should be a moratorium on new hires while the PRC is conducting its review of policing in New Paltz. Also, just to note, the town website is, is very hard to navigate for how simple it is, and I would think there has to be many web designers in New Paltz who can make it more 
user friendly. That's it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Miguel, are we going to answer any of the questions? Uh, we don't normally do a back and forth with I public comment. Is there? Um, I mean, if people want to answer them, they can. I mean, well, it's, it's, it is that it's a dispatch, dispatchers, part time dispatchers are being discussed tonight, not an officer. Is that right, Neil? Yes, they're part time dispatchers, not officers, because we have. So they're the um, ones who answer the phone. Yes. Okay. Which is, which we, are, we are going to be talking about police officers, part time police officers. Okay, very good. I just wondered about that accessing information about the about the uh, meetings that he mentioned. Is that something that we can quickly say? Well, I mean, I, we I believe I believe I believe, Chief, that 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 was not a meeting of the PRRC. That was a, a your own meeting, was it not, Chief? Today? No, um, there was a meeting of the um, the committee for reform and reinvention. We had our uh, monthly uh, conversations with the police uh, at noon this afternoon. And then I think they had something at three o'clock as well. I mean, we can, we can ask them to make, we can, I mean, surely check that email, see why things are bouncing back and ask them to maybe put more of an effort into making sure things are posted on the website. Thanks. Uh, Tanya. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, I also wanted to address the uh, the, the reinvention, reimagining uh, process. Um, I've been extremely uh, disturbed by the way this whole thing has gone. Given the short amount of time to do a major analysis and um, and and redesigning of what. Um, public safety, you know, should look like or can look like. Um, what I find is the, uh, the town board basically did not honor the EO203 to really allow self, um, self determination by the community as to who should be involved in this. Uh, basically, what has happened is um, the town board, you know, made political appointments to this committee with, with virtually no charge and no discussion as to how they are supposed to relate to the community. Um, to date, which is at least six weeks, I believe, uh, there has been no outreach by this committee to the community in terms of getting input or adding other community people to the stakeholder group. Um, and, you know, despite the fact that the board did appoint five people of color, um, it is not necessarily true that these people represent all of the people of color in the community and how they feel about policing. Um, the process has been very, um, uh, very unwelcoming to the community and we're very, very disappointed. And I say we collectively because I've been in touch with quite a number of people who have been discussing this. We're very, very unhappy with the way things are going because what we have is basically secret meetings going on with no public access, no transparency, and the town board seeming to have renounced responsibility for you know making sure that EO203 is actually followed. Um, our legal advice has indicated that self-determination should have been a very major part of this process in terms of who stakeholders would be in the community. And this is not, this has not happened at all. And we have absolutely no idea what these five people are talking about, what they're doing, what they're thinking. They, don't, they do not seem to be open to uh, communication with the community. Several of us have reached out to them and we're told very simply they were trying to get their bearings and they would contact people later. Well, it's many, many weeks and there is no contact. I do not know what this meeting this afternoon was that um, Harper mentioned before. I'm quite surprised about that. 
Um, this is not how you do community outreach. I've been involved in too many of these projects over the years in New Paltz to know what can be done when somebody really wants to do public outreach. And you could wrap it up, please. Anything. Spend three minutes. Okay, thank you very much. I also um, suggest maybe you reread the executive order. Um, it doesn't talk about self determination. The um, executive order says that the supervisor can appoint the board by himself or herself. So that, and we that, did we did much more than that. So yeah, because the community reread. because the community spoke out very loud against what you were doing. Yeah. So um, would Hello. anyone else? like to talk hello I, th I think both maggie and edgar had had their hands up and like to speak yep. who's recognized who's i'd like to go then if i think I, I don't see either hand up who would like to go first maggie okay please go ahead it's on mute maggie I'm sorry, I have to echo what Tanya said and certainly a great support of what Harper has said, but I'm going to say my own words in my own words is that it's extremely disappointing. It is extremely disingenuous to say that this is a process that is transparent, which is supposed to be. It's extremely self serving to appoint people who um, may or may not and may or may not represent the community. And I really think that one of the things that the town really has to do is to improve policing. You have to be models for the police. You know, if you're not modeling for the police, how you relate to the community, how do you expect it to police to do what they're supposed to be doing? We have a process here that started June 15th in theory. And um, it has been seven weeks since this steering committee was appointed and you know from our perspective from my perspective certainly is this is not supposed to be a a, a a political appointment when you abdicate your responsibility and decide that you're going to appoint people to be uh representatives of a community that has not had any input in this and you've had a, an outcry from the community that it really needs to be people who um a, a transparent process you've not done anything about it so it's, it's really, really, really a sad state of affairs when you're supposed to be modeling what the police are supposed to be doing and developing trust in the community, and that has not been done. And certainly it's a shame. I had expectations and hope that the five steering committee members would actually do um, a transparent process, would actually enable a self-selection process and a right and they have not done that. We have repeatedly, different groups that I've been relating to have repeatedly reached out to the steering committee and they simply said, you know, they've got to get their act together. Well, their act together is seven weeks and it's not their act. So I really have to say that it's been a, an application of your responsibility to number one, to make sure you clarify what the mandate was from the beginning. You, you needed to have given them a charge and none of that. It was like here, it was a carte blanche and they're doing whatever they want to do. And maybe they've gotten guidance from you behind the, behind the screen and behind the, underneath the table, if you will. But it's not a service to the community to give information, to not share that information. It was a tremendous disservice. You, you are paid by us. You're paid by us to do a job that, and, and develop the kind of respect and trust that, um, that you should be doing here. And no wonder the police department is having the difficulty they have in, you know, because this is what is happening in our community. The leaders of the community are showing the police department what to do. And now they have identified what the steering committee can do. And they've done it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Edgar Rodriguez, uh, New Paltz resident, can I be heard? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, first of all, today is the anniversary of the appointment of the steering committee. That was 50 days ago. And for the first time, we hear some rumblings about something that went on today. Uh, a number of people have reached out to the steering committee and they have said that they're not available until they get their act together. So it's very disappointing. A lot of us have laid low in respect to everyone, uh, hoping that things will move forward, but they're not moving forward to the satisfaction of the community. Let me uh, glance at you. This document that's here, is the EO3 guidelines from the governor. And the governor states, collaborative is the key word 
it would be a mistake to frame these discussions as an adversarial process or an effort to impose a top-down solutions. It goes on to say that the process must be bottom up. I also want to clarify with the supervisor about the role that you're claiming. According to the governor, it states, local elected officials are the natural position to convene, convene, so that it is illegal for you to appoint, actually. And we may be taking legal action on that. I agree with all the comments that have been made tonight. And I think that it's incumbent upon the uh, five town board members to tonight respond to us now. Uh, you, sh you need to provide some kind of a status report. We understand that Dan is supposed to be the liaison person. I am shocked that you don't have an item in, the, uh, in, in both agendas for tonight, both for the police commission and, and for the uh, town board. If you don't have an, an item after 50 days, after 50 days, that provides an update as to what's going on. What I heard was not really satisfactory. I did not hear any uh, details about what is it that they're attempting to do. I got more from attending a meeting of, of the police chief over at the um, at the at the Hasbro Park, where there were four police officers that were available, and we had a rather interesting conversation that we want to continue. But the fact is that the, the key group that's in, that must be involved in the process, according to the governor, is the community. And while we have um, uh, temporarily accepted the idea of the steering committee, we don't see the steering committee doing uh, what the governor is asking for, that the process, the collaboration with the community must be bottom up. Uh, and given what's going on with the steering committee, we're very disappointed. So I ask directly now, at any time tonight, are any of the, of the town board members going to respond to the concerns that you're hearing from us tonight? Can I have an answer to that, please? Uh, yeah, we had not planned on doing that. Um, I'm happy to do it if we're done with public comment. And I, I apologize, I was on my phone and I'm guessing no one could hear me. Um, so I've come on Zoom this way. Dan, did you hear what I, the things that I said? I, I've, heard, I've heard the whole meeting, but I, I was on mute on my phone, so um, I was unable to respond. Okay, but so if we're done with public comment and, and my fellow board members are fine with it. I'm happy to address a number of these questions. But yes, I also we'd like to hear some details. The, Thank uh, you. Sequence with the rest of the board. So if I, I am, are we done with public comment? Does anyone else, would anyone else like to speak before we finish public comment? If not, Dan, it's all yours. So I, I did not attend the meeting today. If the police chief would like to provide an overview of that, um, he can, I don't mean to put him on the spot. Um, I, I will say relative to us providing updates to the public, um, we did this at our last um, joint town village meeting. And the process going forward as we outlined at our meeting last week is that at our joint town village meetings, um, Essie who is operating kind of as like the spokesperson for the group is going to um, speak uh, and update the community. So that should happen once a month at least. Um, I am sorry to hear about the email issue. That did come to me about a day ago and I believe that has already been corrected. And if not, we'll double check and make sure that it is. Um, relative to community groups reaching out to the collective and not hearing back, I am sorry to hear that. I, I can tell you that none of those groups have reached out to me as well. So if that's been something that's happened, uh, I, I apologize. I, I don't have additional information to say why that is. Um, I, I will say, and I don't want to totally get into a back and forth about the executive order because I don't think this is really a debatable point at this point, especially considering that our neighboring communities have almost universally taken these similar approaches. So if there were a lawsuit to determine that the way that we did it was not proper, then I would imagine that the vast majority of these groups that have been set up would also be, uh, would have to be redone as well. And the, the governor has also provided additional guidelines for what these groups should look like and some of the items that they should undertake. And I don't think it's very far from what we have discussed uh, previously at these meetings as well and what the collective is looking to do too. Um, it is true that the collective has taken some time to kind of evaluate their next steps. I don't think that that is wrong. 
I would say that I agree that we should be able to notify the community probably in a better fashion than we have as to why that is and as that develops, but this is a serious topic. Um, and a lot of communities are around the same place as well. I think I just saw that Kingston just appointed their version of this to just the other day. So we also are ahead of a number of our communities as well. Um, I'm just trying to think of the other questions that were done here as well. I will also say that I am very, very hesitant to changing the process any more drastically than we have. I think we heard loud and clear that people did not want our involvement in this process consistently. Um, and now I'm kind of hearing that people would like our involvement to correct this um, in, in different ways. So what, what I can commit to you is that I can reach out to the group again and make sure that if we have meetings that we should definitely notice those meetings the way we would notice any government meeting and that would be with proper public notice online and letting stakeholders uh, like the groups here as well know that we're doing that. And if that hasn't been the case, then that is a, that is a problem and we should address that. Um, but I, I agree that we should have more updates, that it should be as transparent as possible. But I do want to be honest and say that I think that relative to the mandate from the governor that um, we are on sound footing. And I think that uh, most of our community leaders as well who have partaken in this process would agree with that too. So that's an area that I don't really think needs to be reopened or reevaluated. But I do agree that going forward, we can do more to reach out to stakeholders. And I will personally tomorrow reach out to them as well to see if we can get a better update. Dan, may I ask a question before Chief, before you jump in? Uh, Dan, just a, just a clarifying point. Um, by the governor's order, we have to have our process uh, clear, uh, clarified by April of 2021. Uh, so from that standpoint, we are still creating that process. Uh, from my understanding, and the steering committee is starting their work on deciding what that, how that process is going to move forward. Uh, nothing more than that. They're not taking on this work alone. Uh, they are creating their process and like they have say, they're saying, they're, they're getting their heads together on what this process should look like, including what membership should be part of that committee. Is that, is, are, those, are those statements correct? You're largely correct. So the deadline is set for April for them to provide a finished product to us as the town board. Um, what the governor's office has also done is better outline what they think these commissions should review. To be very candid, it is very close to the document that when we worked for our own steering document, not thinking that we were going to get guidance from uh, the governor, um, we, we hit, I think, almost all of the key points that the governor then came out with additional recommendations to review. So that was something that the steering committee had or was already honing in on as major key areas. And that's something that's also been validated by the governor's office too. So there is, there is, there is an April 1st deadline, which I don't think we should totally think is too far away, but I will say, especially in terms of our neighboring communities, I think we're right on track or ahead, on, ahead of pace, but I agree that we can do more to kind of uh, let the community know where we are and what's happening. And I, and I do want to note at the joint town and village meeting, we did get an update. Uh, Essie and um, another person from that meeting, uh, from, the, from the committee, were both at the meeting and reported. And I just want to ask, um, it sounded like uh, uh, Chief Lucchese just had, had some comments that I want to just make some space for. Thank you. Just wanted to add, uh, you know, a little bit to what Dan had said. Um, the committee um, is right now is just they're taking a comprehensive look at everything we do. Um, you know, they're in the midst of, uh, you know, going through our operations, our policies and procedure manual, the New York State accreditation manual, the guidance manual from the governor's office. And, and so right now they're looking at they, they, they're meeting. Um, I, I've, I've met with they, them a few they're times. Meeting. Um, I, I, um, and they're looking at evaluating policies and operations as, and, and, and the governor's guidance, it's actually a checklist that they have to complete and the town board would have to certify um, prior to uh, April 1st. Um, today's meeting was, a, was, I think, one of their first outreach efforts. Uh, I, I was not involved with that, and that's by design. The, you know, they want to... Um, create safe space for people to come and to talk to them about the police. And so 
right now, you know, there'll be some meetings I will attend, but this was, this was intentionally designed for me not or any police officers to attend um, so that people would um, uh, be a little bit more comfortable. Um, you know, the only other thing I would throw out there in terms of, you know, announcements or, or, or just if, if people feel comfortable enough, they can always contact us as well. And we are meeting on that third Thursday of the month and, and information that we get, we are certainly going to bring forward to the committee. Um, you know, if, if anybody wants to you know, use us as a, as a conduit as well. Um, that's all I had in regards to that. Okay. Um, and I guess with that, we, um, I'd like to um, maybe go into executive session. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to stop the recording here and I'm going to uh, put a bunch of people in the waiting room. So I'd like to make a motion to go into executive session and ask the chief and our um, attorney, Matt Ryan to join us. Second, David. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put some people into, um, in the waiting room, don't take it personally. Um, so, so we have Dan, David, Julie, Matthew, Chief, and Alex, and make sure I didn't put anyone in the waiting room I wasn't supposed to. And so I'm going to stop the recording now. I'll put it on pause. Uh, um, I have started the recording again, and I'm going to let it is 810. I'm going to admit everyone in uh, to the meeting. And... So we have um, ended executive session and I've invited everyone back into the meeting and I'd like to make a motion to come out of executive session. Um, We're not taking any action. Second, Dan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Hey, um, I'd like to now hand it over to the chief and um, we're on um, item three on the police commission agenda. So. So for item three, it was to review. I sent proofs of um, tickets that we're, we would be looking to use um, when we're, you know, when we're dealing with um, ordinance arrests and, uh, and minor penal law violation arrests. Um, you know, one of the things we want to try and do is minimize the impact and, the, and you know, that, you know, these, these minor violations have on individuals um, and also expedite the process. So, um, I took uh, copies that are utilized um, in a couple other jurisdictions. I met with the, um, the local ADA and he reviewed this with DA Clegg. Um, these accusatory instruments uh, will suffice uh, as both a, a prosecutorial instrument as well as a, a rec requiring an appearance back in court. Um, and, you know, really will make these encounters, I think, uh, uh, less, I'm hoping to be less stressful when we have to, you know, make, you know, an arrest for an open container or a noise ordinance, you know, the officer is simply going to take a driver's license, get name information, put in the date of the offense, the location, check a box, and then, you know, they'll, they'll write, you know, a quick blurb in the facts uh, section, and then they send them on their way. Um, so I think this, you know, we're really, you know, an effort here to try and, um, minimize or de-escalate how these, you know, how a normal arrest procedure goes. And, and, and as I said, uh, it's similar to a traffic ticket. Um, and, and hopefully this will help minimize, you know, the impact that these things have on, on you know, some of the emotional impact that this may have on, on, on individuals. Um, so these are proofs that we've come up with in consultation, like I said, with the DA's office um, and, uh, and would satisfy everything we need to with the courts, as long as it's okay with, um, the commission, I'd like to you know, move forward with uh, getting books for all of our members. Motion, motion to approve those if we need, if we need a motion to approve those. Second. All in favor? 
Oh, sorry. I'd like to just Hi. for a moment. Rob, um, how will you determine which ordinances will be, will have, uh, you know, be in the book? So the, 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 what the proof size tent, you actually have the list of ordinances that we're going to be using. So there's village ordinances and there's town ordinances, and there's also section for other. So these are the most common ordinances that we deal with. So the, I, again, just, you know, if I have a noise complaint and we go to a house party, you know, we can take the individual's information. We check off that box. We write, you know, in the facts would be on updating time, you know, noise complaint at such and such location you know, sign it, date it, hand them their copy of the ticket, and we're on our way. Um, so these are, this is, that's on the ordinance. And then on the other one where it says violation information, we chose the most often cited penal law violations. And, um, and then again, um, actually, on the proof that I gave you, the only change that I made since then is we removed anything with the ABC law, and we just put an other section in there. So again, if it's something, a violation, we can check a box, write what that other section is, and just write it in there. Uh, and we'd be issuing that same as a traffic ticket. Okay. I, okay. So that was meant to be the, the the final for now, anyways. But it sounds like there's a lot of room for other. So. Yeah, I mean, with the, that's why I on the on the one for the information violation, um, we remove that ABC section. Just I rather have a section where you can check a box, right, and then write another penal law section and. Um, the DA, the ADA said that that would suffice again in terms of, you know, being a, a sufficient prosecutorial instrument um, and, and we, can, we can use these. This is, uh, you know, something that the, both the city and the town of Poughkeepsie utilize as well. Um, and that's kind of where I, I, I stole that idea from. So. Thanks. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, so I'd like to make a, a motion to um, authorize the chief and or his, his designee to conduct interviews for part-time officer applicants. Second. Um, any discussion? I know that I just, I'll give a little explanation because I know this was brought up early on. I mean, so the reason we're, I'm asking for this is currently we have eight part-time officers out of those six have full-time jobs. So only our two newest, part-time police officers have a decent amount of, of availability. Um, we're, gonna, we're looking to hire a couple more part-time part -time police officers um, so that it, it, it helps us offset the overtime. So when we have uh, someone calling sick or someone needs to take a vacation leave, you know, having part, we, we, we use part-time officers first and they're paid on a per diem basis. Obviously, there's training costs, there's outfitting costs, there's, uh, you know, the, the cost in terms of background investigation, things like that. But, I, 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 you know, we've discussed before that the, the, the one positive is once they're trained and certified, then, you know, it's a per diem. The problem you, we always run into is that more often than not, you get somebody up and certified. And next thing you know, they've got a part time job in New Paltz, in Lloyd, in, you know, in Rosendale. And so, you know, availability always becomes an issue with that. So that's why we're, I'm asking to have these, you know, uh, just to conduct interviews uh, for, for some more part-time police officers. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, so this is a, um, Rob can give some details, but um, I need to make a motion to authorize transfer of funds in the amount of $6,000. Um, from the 2020 budget in-car camera line into the police department computer reserve fund? So um, just to give you all a, a, an explanation, we budgeted in the 2020 budget, we, um, we budgeted for $6,000 to purchase a uh, new in-car camera system. Um, with warranties and lifetime, you know, it, anything past seven years, we try to replace one car camera every um, like seven to eight years. Um, we've been lucky. These are really good cameras. We have, we don't have a need right now to replace anything. And what I'd like to do is put that money in that new computer reserve line that we created specifically for this so that I'm not buying a camera to replace something that's currently working, but I also have this money and we put it in the funds. So then next year, if I, you know, if something unexpected happens and I need to replace two within a given year, 
I, I have that, we have that fund. That's why we created that computer reserve fund was to, you know, when we, we talked about this with the body cameras, you know, the camera, one of those cameras is about three to, year, three to five year shelf life um, and they're a thousand dollars a piece. Um, so, you know, having this fund will alleviate, uh, you know, will, will alleviate any burden on our, on our annual budget as we, as we move forward. Um, so uh, I was hoping maybe, uh, well, looking for approval to take this money because at this point we're not going to be spending it. To, we don't need to buy a new car camera, but I would put it in that computer reserve line because that's the reserve line that, that, you know, specifically uh, for the, something like this down the road. Um, okay. Um, all in favor? I think you need a second. I'll oh. second. All in favor. All, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I'd like to, Rob, uh, Chief, I'd like to hand it over to you for the monthly report. Okay. I apologize. I, I do have a couple quick announcements. Um, so we'll do our, um, in, in the month of October, we're actually going to have two um, informal gatherings. Um, the, the first, and we'll put this on our calendar on the webpage. Um, the first is really to celebrate the National Coffee with the Cop Day. That's on October 7th. So, um, you know, we'll have some officers out, you know, different coffee shops just, you know, as, as call for service for allow just to try throughout the day, engage, you know, the public, anybody that wants to speak with them, you know, and, and, and engage them in some informal dialogue, you know, that's, that's the purpose of that. Um, so we're going to make sure that we're, we participate in that. And then we'll have our other monthly meeting um, on October 15th. Um, and then in addition to that, we're looking to try and do some more targeted meetings as well. Um, I'll, uh, so, um, but those are the two that we have on there right now. Again, they're basically you know, it's a casual, informal conversation with the police. Today, we were down at the picnic area. Uh, Lieutenant Butler was down at the picnic area at the uh, post office parking lot. And uh, some people had come and, you know, it was a, he said it was a, you know, really good conversation and just good to get to meet people. So, um, you know, and these are opportunities for the officers to be out there as well. Um, and so that'll be on the 15th and 7th. And then the only other announcement that I have is uh, uh, in October, we will be uh, conducting our fall um, defensive tactics firearms training cycle. So that will mean uh, we will be doing some firearms training at, um, at our range. Um, so, you, you know, uh, residents of Mountain Rest Road may hear um, some shooting. Um, there's only one Sunday that we're going to be doing this training. Uh, that's on October 18th. Um, and uh, we should be done by 4 p.m. Uh, every day. You know, the, the, I think we're doing four or five iterations, but we'll be done by uh, 4 p.m. On, on those days. Um, and we won't be uh, shooting much uh, any earlier than 9 a.m. on any of those days. So we appreciate the the patience of the residents there. Um, this will be the only uh, cycle that we were doing this year uh, as, a, as a result of COVID. So with that, um, I move on to the, the monthly report. Um, just, you know, wanted to call attention to a couple things, I guess, in the first with, with my uh, report. Um, we uh, implemented a, a new or revised our hate crimes policy. Um, this was updated to comply with new revisions through New York State, um, really more definitions. Uh, and we incorporated some of the uh, definitions from some of our other policies as well. Um, and then we uh, implemented uh, an employee assistance program policy. This is a new policy implementation, but it really just memorialize what we have already been doing, um, you know, our existing practices. Um, I met with... Uh, we're still working with the towards getting the kiosk for the sharps. I met with uh, Woodland Pond. They actually signed uh, a memorandum of understanding. Um, and we're now, I guess, just we're waiting for the kiosk and some other materials from the New York State Department of Health. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm hoping to hear back from some other medical facilities. I'm, I'm having a hard time getting a hold of um, people to coordinate drop off of uh, these disposals elsewhere. Um, but we're ready to go. So as soon as we get the kiosk, we at least have Woodland Pond. Uh, and, uh, you know, so this is a you know, great program. And then just uh, call attention to the, uh, the, uh, the pop-up Narcan training event that was uh, conducted on August 31st over at Hasbro Park, uh, the New Paltz Opioid Prevention Team. Uh, Lieutenant Butler and Officer Krause uh, were there with a bunch of other um, um, 
substance abuse uh, providers. Um, in terms of letters of commendation, we had, um, I think, six or seven of those. Um, actually, there were two that are really for the same incident. Um, the first uh, one is via email, and then actually I sent you, there's also a card attached. Um, it was for Officers Peace and Milton, uh, the, uh, in, in their handling of a three-car accident uh, back on October 7th. Uh, the people involved with that actually, uh, Jason Brownies dropped those off and, and wrote a, a nice card just thanking them um, for all their efforts at, at the accident. Um, there was another combination for Officer Mitchell. Um, this actually related, uh, it was related to an accident. Or what, it started out as a welfare check and then come to find out it was a motor vehicle accident. And uh, um, about two o'clock in the morning, all the way on the back end of Plutarch Road, um, uh, uh, Officer Mitchell had located the operator, um, and this was uh, uh, the person thanking them um, for everything that they did, and uh, um, just you know looking out for them and, and making you know going above and beyond just to, to try to find them and locate them that night. So it was uh, appreciative. Um, the next commendation is for uh, Officer Halstead uh, for his response uh, to a medical call over at Woodland Ponds. Um, and uh, just uh, his assistance and, and as, the, uh, as the writer indicated, just you know, officer was calm, kind, efficient, and, and very reassuring to the resident there. Um, and uh, wanted to make sure that uh, uh, we conveyed uh, their personal thanks uh, to him and appreciation for what he did. Um, the next commendation is for Officer Milton and Sergeant Lewis who absolutely went above and beyond. Um, this, was, uh, uh, this was for an incident that occurred in July um, during a torrential downpour. Um, and uh, the individuals involved here had, uh, Officer Milton happened to be driving by and noticed that they had a flat tire. Um, he helped them unload their groceries and get new bags and change their tire and made sure they got over to the gas station to uh, uh, make sure their spare tire had enough air. Um, uh, Sergeant Lewis had assisted because they had some trouble changing the tires, but um, just a really, really, really nice letter uh, to them and, and, and loved reading what uh, they had to say about Officer Milton and, uh, and Sergeant Lewis with that. Um, the next letter of commendation was, uh, it mentions officers, I couldn't, find out who, but uh, specifically mentioned was uh, Dispatcher Rosado um, and wanted to thank them um, for the assistance that they, uh, that he provided and the officers. Um, it was a parent calling about a uh, welfare check of their, of their son um, and uh, just wanted to thank them for uh, going, you know, the, the keeping them calm on the phone and then you know, making sure that uh, we were able to locate their son and, and that he, he was in good health. So I wanted to thank them. Uh, the next letter of commendation is um, for officers Bernhardt, and Polson and Marsh. Um, and it really was just, I guess, a, a resident who wanted to thank, a resident whose house we'd been to on several occasions related to medical emergencies. And in this particular case, there was difficulty locating a highway key um, officers were able to um, still make entry, were able to uh, render assistance, and the resident was very uh, appreciative of them, their kindness and their patience, uh, and as, as she noted in there, their sense of humor to the whole thing as well. So um, that's it for commendations. Um, we had one uh, defensive action report. Um, it was for an incident that occurred on August 20th um, at about uh, 1230 in the morning, uh, State uh, Route 32 South. This was during, uh, we had, were assisting multiple police agencies that had uh, initiated a pursuit of a uh, uh, stolen vehicle in uh, the city of Poughkeepsie, uh, came all the way through into New Paltz. Um, the uh, operator of the vehicle had, um, had crashed uh, at the intersection of 32 and South Putt. Um, when we arrived, the vehicle, uh, the individual had fled the vehicle. Um, the officer in this particular case was uh, working with a, a canine officer from the city of Poughkeepsie uh, doing a track to locate the individual. 
um, and and, uh, and in doing so um, uh, had uh, uh, had their firearm drawn and, and did draw down on the individual um, when they were located in the woods. Um, the individual um, was not complying with the, the verbal commands. Um, ultimately, uh, the, the city Poughkeepsie officer had released their canine. They were able to gain control of the uh, the suspect. Um, and then the officer had um, uh, assisted in covering, in handcuffing him. Uh, the suspect in this case was a 23-year-old uh, white male um, and uh, from uh, uh, lived outside of the area. Um, and it's been a while since I've done these, so if there's any other information, I, I, I forget what the, uh, please let me know. Um, and that is it for um, defensive actions. Just so you know, this report itself, um, obviously it's, it qualifies for our in-house, but then this also gets reported to the New York State Repository. Um, this would be one of those qualifying reports. Uh, it wouldn't be for the FBI, but it would be for uh, New York State, and, and it was reported up there to them. Um, in terms of the monthly training report, just a couple things that I wanted to highlight. The first is the, uh, the sexual harassment training. So for the police department, we began um, our sexual harassment training. Um, it's going to be in-house instruction. This is to comply with the annual requirements. Um, and our training consisted of review, you know, members will have to re review our current policy as well as um, the training materials uh, through the New York State Department of Labor. There's an interactive component that they have to um, complete as well. Um, and then the only other thing on there is uh, uh, that Officer Yeager has completed her uh, field training uh, program and she, since September 1st, has been uh, on her own and doing phenomenal work. Um, so uh, really excited to have her in the mix. And, and like I said, uh, just, just doing a really, really awesome job. So um, I don't have anything else that I wanted to specifically review in the report unless anyone else has questions about anything in the report. Rob, this is Alex. I just want to start this commendations um, to really congratulate you guys on how you dealt with the issue on Main Street with a semi truck and the young individual who got dragged down the street. You guys did a really great job. I was back there uh, stuck in traffic, but it was very efficient. Um, you guys did a really, really nice job with making sure that everybody, you know, went the right way and stopped. So I just wanted to let you know that. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I'll, I'll, I'll convey that to our people as well as, you know, the state and the sheriff and SUNY. I mean, you know, it was a, a rather large scene. And uh, so, uh, you know, without yeah. those other resources, but I, I, I thank you so much. I, I appreciate you mentioning that. Yeah, it was well done. So thank you. Thank you. I'm trying to unmute myself. Um, so that's all for the um, the monthly report. I'd like to move on to the next item, and it, it's I'd like to make a recommendation to the town motion to a recommendation to the town board for hiring Tiffany Claude and Alexa Petrolace as part time dispatchers. So I, I just give you a little. Oh. Okay, discussion. Just to, again. Sorry about that. Um, so again, for in, in terms of you know these hire the hiring of the um, uh, of these two women for part time dispatcher is similar to what I had explained earlier with the part time police officers. Um, you know, it, it really uh, our part timers primarily cover the weekends. Um, we are um, looking at a situation where one of our full timers. Um, will not be available to us for an extended period of time. Um, so, uh, you know, having these two part-time dispatchers, getting them up and running and trained will, will help alleviate overtime costs and make sure we don't have, um, you know, unfilled shifts. Uh, just to let you a little know, Tiffany uh, Claude is uh, originally from Long Island. Um, she uh, attended SUNY New Paltz um, and actually did an internship with us. Um, and, uh, um, she's looking to pursue a career in law enforcement. Um, but, uh, wanted to get, uh, you know, her start, uh, through, through the, uh, being a dispatcher. Um, and, and again, did a, a full semester internship through SUNY New Pulse with us. And so we're really excited. Alexa is, uh, 
uh, 23 years old. She went, uh, she was a graduate from Walk Hill High School. Um, and uh, she uh, is currently employed as a uh, part-time dispatcher in the village of Walden. Um, so, uh, you know, really excited about her as well. Um, and hoping that, you know, her training time will be uh, considerably less given the fact that uh, she has uh, pretty good experience already. So um, we're looking forward to uh, getting them up and running um, and, and uh, numbers here. Thanks. Did we, already have a, did we already have a second for that? No, uh, I'll yeah. second, David, Julie. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. So I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the uh, police commission meeting. Second, David. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'd like to move on to the um, town board portion of the meeting now. And um, so I'd like to make a motion to uh, open the August 20th, 20, uh, no, sorry, <laughs> uh, the September 17th, uh, 2020 uh, town board meeting to order. Second, Second. Alec. And uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. to make a motion to um, approve the agenda. I have a few Second, things to David. So I have a, uh, a few things to change on here. Um, I sent um, an email around earlier. We had a discussion about water sewer billing and uh, collection to the agenda. And then um, I'd like to pull D off of the consent agenda or consent agenda. That's the acceptance of resignation. We're going to make some changes to that. And then uh, number three, I'd like to add a, uh, an item of, um, discussing uh, a request by Chuck in uh, recreation. Second. Um, any any all other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, so we have public input. Um, like to, um, if people have comments, I would like to maybe keep them very brief. We've had some people waiting uh, for about an hour and a half now to talk about the uh, construction at uh, 59 North Putt. So if um, anyone has questions, if you'd like to add something new, public comment, please, please raise your hand. And, um, and I ask you, please try to keep it brief. If not, um, I'd like to move on. Maggie, do you have something new to add? Yes, I, I have a question. Um, I well, heard we're, the we're not gonna we're not gonna go back and forth on questions. This is you can make a comment, but we're not having a discussion. No, I, I, I understand that, but I can ask a question and I assume that somehow the answer will come to uh, the public because in theory I'm asking questions so that the public uh, gets information. So you don't have to answer it. Um, I simply, I want to make an observation. Maybe that's a better way of describing it. I, I heard the commendations that were read and, you know, I, I don't want to let people think that, um, that I don't value the police. Um, and I really listened to those commendations and I was pleased with them. Um, I think that certainly the police have an important role to play in our community and those commendations have tremendous value for people to know that the police are doing uh, very good work also. Um, I did want to ask though, um, when you read those commendations, um, is, is it because it's required as some kind of reporting to the public? Or is it that, um, is it that you are doing it because you want the public to know what good work the police do? Because if it's, if it's required, then I understand. But if it's, you want the public to learn about the good work, I'm wondering how do you learn, how does the public learn about the, the complaints against the police? Because if you're reporting things selectively, then I think it wouldn't be fair um, to do it that way. So it's a comment, it's food for thought maybe, but um, you know, if, if you're gonna report the good, 
publicly, then I think you need to also report the bad publicly. If there's a number of complaints, then anybody complaining should, we should know about that too. That's my comment, I suppose. I hope it's okay if I just briefly say we do. That's already something that is done. Sorry? It's already something that they do. They, oh. they report both commendations and what's the other? <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and the complaints. Oh, yeah. So they report who's, what officer has gotten a complaint. The name of the officer. I'm not you sure. Don't have, you don't have to. I have to think. All right. Um, so many more commendations. Anyone else have a, anyone else have a comment? Something new, Edgar? Uh, yes, it's new information. Uh, and it's sort of uh, before the, uh, the town board and the steering committee continues to go astray. It's, it's important that uh, you hear what the spirit, uh, the, the law and intent is with the executive order 203 and community participation. I'll do this within the three minutes that I'm allowed. Um, we do have copies of that. I think the public needs to hear this, and I think you all need to hear this, and you need to have an understanding, okay? Because apparently you don't. The collaborative process should involve the entire community in the discussion. I'm reading from page two. On page 110, the governor's order specifically requires an inclusive, open, and transparent process. Specifically, you should consider engaging residents who have had interactions with the police, residents who have been incarcerated, local neighborhood homeless and housing advocates, mental health professionals. That's on page 110. And then finally on page 111, it reads, um, with an open and transparent process. In addition to incorporating a diverse group of community members, you should keep the public informed throughout the process. The police reform and reinvention collaborative was designed to enable all members of the community to participate in reimagining the role of law enforcement. Your process will not be successful if it simply restates the current functions, strategies, and operations of the police department without deep and probing considerations of the perspectives of those who seek reform. I'm almost at the end. Transparency is essential to ensure that the plan reflects a shared vision for the future of law enforcement. Transparency entails making planning and deliberation meetings public, polling and surveying the public for their views on specific issues, providing periodic updates as the planning process moves forward, making all research materials available, and finally having a plan to incorporate public comment feedback in the planning, in the final plan. Thank you. I hope that information uh, brings to light what the concern of many of us uh, has been and will continue to be. Thank you, good night. Thank you. I just wanted to quickly say that at our next meeting, um, there's gonna be an update from the commission as there was at our previous meeting as well. Um, I don't know if I had said this earlier, but they're coming to all of our joint meetings to provide an update. We had reported this out last week. I realized not everyone was there at that. I just wanted to make that clear, but I will certainly pass your concerns on as well. for later um okay um if no one else has any comments i'd like to uh hand the, hand the meeting over to matt eiler hey neil hey, matt. hey guys how you been julie david and uh oh dan's not dan's there but it's no picture so i, I haven't seen you guys for a while I'm matt. good to see you guys how you doing man and um I guess I don't really know Alex, so I guess uh, I'll get to know her as, as time goes on. But um, hi, I was hi, so I was involved from the beginning on this thing, um, acquiring uh, the 59 North Putt building. And um, our team has been working very hard on the project. Um, we're really at the point now where the design is complete and the bid docs are being drawn up and they're almost complete and we're gonna be going out to bid very soon. So we thought it was a good time to check in with you all and give you a little bit of a sort of top of the waves overview of what's going on. Um, we're gonna, I first wanna say just 
I've been very happy with our team on this. Uh, everyone has worked together extremely well. It's been very collaborative and I think very respectful. Everyone's ideas have been bounced around. We've gotten over a lot of challenges. Um, let me just run who's in that team. We got uh, Rick Alfandre and Sam Dillahay of Alfandre Architecture. Um, I believe they're both on the call. Uh, we got Lou Rodriguez from Palumbo Group. He's our construction manager. He's on the call. Andy Willingham of Willingham Engineering, he's not on the call, but that's okay. He's done a great job. <clears throat> Neil has been extremely hands-on on the whole thing. He's been in almost all the meetings and had a lot of input. And uh, I want to especially thank Marty, who um, even after he left the board, he stayed on to advise as a volunteer and has put in probably 100 hours with, with no uh, compensations. And he's been a great help with his expertise and his insights. So I thank Marty. Um, our, our plan right now is to just give a quick uh, overview of the project. We're gonna talk about some of the challenges we've faced. Um, we're gonna talk about where we are today. And we're gonna talk about where we're going in the next few months, coming months, like next whatever year until we're done. So um, I think we should start off with Sam uh, or, or Rick, because uh, Rick was not gonna be on the call. It's up to you guys. But um, to just give like a sort of a quick overview of, of the key design and, and key features of the project without, you know, we don't want to get into the weeds too much, but just a basic layout and, and some of the key features, if you don't mind. Thank you. Let Sam take the lead. Mute, you, have to un, you have to unmute yourself. I think I made you guys co-host so you can do whatever you want. All right, I apologize for that. Can everybody, uh, I assume. Good evening, good evening. Um, thank you. We've been working with Matt, Marty, Neil, and uh, uh, Chief Lucchese and the court for the last little while to develop this project. Um, I think we've done a very, a pretty good job here. Uh, so we've been working pretty closely with the court and the police, uh, as well as the town, I guess, really to sort of, um, after completing earlier uh, sort of uh, needs assessment for both the police and the court, um, 59 North Putt uh, as a building shell uh, provided us with really the, with the, I guess the adequate square footage um, or at least the footprint. Um, so within this footprint, we are building an entirely sort of a, a building structurally inside of it. Uh, second floor is being not supported by any of the existing building, but uh, by sort of interior load-bearing walls. Um, our primary goals, um, of course, were sort of dealing with, you know, indoor air quality, uh, you know, a highly efficient building that's sort of much better insulated than the current warehouse uh, that is there, I mean, as far as the, uh, the existing uh, insulation, um, as well as meeting the sort of program needs of the police and the court and the town. Uh, to that end, um, we sort of divided the building into two parts. Uh, you know, there's with one primary entrance, there's a public lobby, uh, that's, you know, have a sort of signage and direction uh, to, to the, uh, I know we, I think we've sent everybody the plans. Um, so I apologize if you're not familiar with it. Um, the court uh, is sort of to the left, is the primary meeting space. Um, during sort of not, during non-court hours, uh, this space can function as a public meeting room. Um, as, and uh, in addition to that, we have a sort of there's you know jury meeting rooms that can also be used as a as public space. Um, the courthouse itself has been we worked closely with the court officers and the and the uh, office of court administration to make sure everything was uh, sort of you know as a court this uh, building will function um, adequately well it'll function well during court hours the court officers will you know feel secure in their office space. Outside of court hours, uh, the spaces that are able to be used by the public will be used by the public. Our security system will allow uh, for sort of different um, situations where, you know, sort of during the day, the court officers are the only ones who have access during other periods of time. The public will have access to, uh, to meeting rooms in the court space. Um, again, with the police, we, you know, we, we worked with the police in their uh, initial building uh, on South Putt. Um, and sort of have you know taken the lessons that have been learned in that project, um, brought in, bringing them to the new building. Um, they'll have their sort of they'll be accessed by the main lobby, but they'll have their own private lobby if someone you know so there's a nights of uh, heavy court sessions or something like that. You need to uh, have a police matter that you need to deal with. You have your own you know you're not amongst uh, a large gathering. 
um, all the main functions of the police are on the, the, the first floor, the second floor will have more of the administrative uh, functions of the police. Uh, in addition, on the second floor of this building, we have a, a fairly large amount of storage space that's going to be used uh, by, by the town as well as the police uh, and the court. Um, storage space is always the unromantic uh, uh, part of any um, building program, but in this building, we have, we have an abundance of it, which is, I think, will be good from a long-standing perspective. Um, our primary goal, and I'll just sort of wrap it up if I'm rambling here, but our primary goal has really been dealing with the sort of the interior condition uh, for the occupants, for the people who work there, for the people who uh, go there for uh, uh, un, un, uninteresting, re, un, you know, I don't know, people who go to the police station, I guess what I'm getting at. People who are in court, you know, we want this building to function well for the people who are in it. Um, the, you know, the exterior of the building, we are fixing up with landscaping. We have a nice new entrance, um, you know, but our goal was an energy efficient building that is sort of, you know, that provides a good, healthy environment for the people that work in it. Um, and I think that we've done a good job of, of achieving it. Thanks, Sam. That was great. Yeah, I, they've done a great job doing very high efficiency um, heating and cooling, heat exchangers, you know, extra insulation, and really good air quality. And I think there's been a tremendous amount of thought into how to make the design function, you know, as well as it possibly can for the court. I mean, the like working with the OCA, the Office of Court Administration, there's all these rules that, you know, the court we have now is not really in compliance at all. This is gonna be great for the for the clerks and the judges and, and everyone who's there. It works great as a mean space. And also with the police, we really spent a lot of time figuring out how to make it as efficient and, and practical as it can be. Um, so just quickly, I just wanna talk about as, as with any project of this nature, we have run across some uh, <clears throat> interesting complexities and challenges. Um, you know, it was a, you know, I had no idea how much goes into a police station in terms of communications and security and making sure the juveniles aren't with the adults and making sure that the suspects are separate from, you know, it's all these different considerations. And um, we faced all those complexities. And then with the court, it's hard enough to make a court, but to also have it function right as a, just a really fantastic public meeting space. It's, it's going to be great. Um, but to have those two functions in one, Neil was insistent that, you know, we're building this, spending all this money building this building, this court. You know, he, does, he I think I heard him say at least 15 times during the design, I'm not, not spending that money to have a, you know, huge meeting room that gets used two nights a week. We're not doing that. And, and even to the point of making sure, like uh, Sam mentioned, that even the jury meeting room, which probably gets used twice a year, it, it can be a breakout room, a, a conference room for uh, the public. Um, a big challenge we faced that we hadn't really quite anticipated was um, the building is perfectly up to code, right? It's a new building. It's not only a 10 year old building, but the way the code works for essential services such as this, you have to make it way stronger in terms of how's it gonna handle an earthquake? How's it gonna handle a hurricane? because you wanna make sure it's a place of refuge and a place of stability during a natural disaster. And we all know that those things could continue to get worse. So we're sort of what they're calling stiffening the building, but we're basically putting in stronger cross members and things like that. Uh, we worked closely with the metal building manufacturer and they did some engineering for us and we got that figured out. Um, another unexpected issue was um, as we did some, um, I guess it was, uh, sonic measurements, we were able to determine that there are actually some voids under the uh, slab. So um, when we're adding a second floor, it's putting a lot of load on that slab. So we've had to come up with a whole design for um, how to reinforce the walls to make sure they're adequate. Um, another sort of unforeseen curveball that came at the last minute, there were some delays out of the uh, Department of Health trying to get our well approved. And uh, we found out that our water has a little bit of salt in it and uh, that, that's an issue. So we ended up, we're gonna end up bringing in municipal water and trench it, doing a trench and bringing it up from the fire station. Um, that's where the water is in the street. So that added a little cost too. Um, the last sort of complexity I wanted to mention is just with the whole COVID thing, there are like all these extra regulations in place such as taking temperature every day. This is for the workers I'm talking about who are gonna be building the thing. 
Um, there's hand washing stations, cleaning stations. You got to keep apart so that reduces some of the efficiency of the construction. You got to pay for all that PPE and uh, you got to daily clean all the equipment, all the tools. So that's just another thing that's kind of adding to the, uh, the, the costs. Um, while, when we saw some of this stuff happening, we tried to be creative and um, find other ways to save money without compromising the project. <clears throat> uh, Chris Marks, um, he stepped up. Uh, the, you're allowed to have him do some of the site work there as long as it falls within sort of the normal types of things they do. The rules about you can't ask them to do things they wouldn't normally do because that would be competitive against other contractors. But if it's part of their normal sort of course of work and they can work it in and they volunteer to do it, they can. <clears throat> Hats off to Chris Marks. He, he and his crew stepped up and have done a lot of the site work. They, they brought in all the fill. They cleared the site. So I really, I, I personally want to thank him and the work that he's done. Um, also, Andy Willingham, the engineer, probably saved us $250,000 to $300,000 by figuring out that even though we obviously need a lot more septic than we would have if it were if it was just like a warehouse, there's this new technology they have where you can get like three times the efficiency out of each trench, and I'm not going to go there. It's, it's a complicated little system, but um, that saved us having to bring sewer, which was going to be problematic because it's, it's upgrade, so we would have had to have pumps and all this stuff. So that was a win, and then... Um, we also have identified an OCA grant uh, that's, uh, I think, $30,000 that we can use this year to help with um, the cost of installation of, of some of the court materials. Um, I want to, Marty has been instrumental in that, so I, I want to give Marty a, a moment to talk. And also, again, I just, I want him to have a chance to talk just in recognition of everything he's done for us. Mute, Marty. has been a fun team to work with and uh, it's nice that we're at the point where the drawings are virtually finished and uh, we can look forward to getting pricing. So one of the things that we're, we're working with uh, Becky Seward and the court on is applying for a Justice Court Assistance Program grant, which could be up to $30,000 and there's a long list of things that it can be used to pay for, including the construction of the judge's bench and the witness stand and security for the court and, and so on. Uh, we have until October 8th and we're hoping we'll garner $30,000 to help us with the uh, project. Okay, thanks Marty. So um, as I alluded to, because there've been sort of some unforeseen challenges, but I think that's to be expected, it happens. I mean, especially the COVID stuff, that's not foreseen. But as, in terms of budget, we're like, very tight like we're not terribly over budget but it's kind of a squeaker to be honest with you and we're not really going to know how it all pans out until we go out and we actually get the bids which is coming up right away um we're hopeful that it'll be fine it may be a little bit above and so we've had to get creative because unlike a private project where, where you come in a little over budget you borrow some more money or you raise some more money or whatever in this case we can't sign the contracts with money we don't have. And the budget won't be passed by the time we, like I'm saying the town budget, so we can't take money there. And if we have to go raise any more money at all, which wouldn't be much, but if we did, it's, you, we all know we live through the process, right? It takes three, four months. And what we don't wanna do is hold up the project. That was like top priority because of the expiration of the police lease. And also um, Lou has advised us that this is the time to get the bids because um, the contractors are gonna be happy to have an indoor job in the winter, is the reason really. And so what we did, I think is pretty creative. Um, is, there's this thing you could do called an alt ad. So you have a base bid and then an alt ad. And alt ad means, so you take certain elements of the project that are gonna happen later in the project and that you don't need for a CFO necessarily. And you strip them out of the project and you still get bid on them, but their bid is, alt ads, alternative additions. And so we're gonna put the bid out with a base bid of all the stuff we need to do. And then there's gonna be something like $300,000 worth of stuff that's um, alt, alt ads. So things like landscaping, things like the final paving, 
things like the Sally port, which is where the police can pull their cars in and when they have um, suspects with them. And so if we get lucky enough that the bids are strong and we're okay, then all that stuff goes right back in the project. And if it isn't, then we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll either, we'll have a discussion about what should be included and what shouldn't. I mean, Neil has been very clear eyed about this, that this is a building we're gonna have for 50 years plus for this town. And he's not gonna let it go from being a great building to like an okay building over a couple hundred grand. So what we will do is we'll get creative. We'll, we just don't know how it's gonna pan out, but worst case scenario, you know, if we need to borrow a few hundred thousand dollars, we will. Um, I'm gonna let Lou talk about the next steps, but then I'm gonna finish up with uh, some really good news. I'll put it all in perspective about how the uh, bonding worked out, which is really incredible. So well, I'm gonna end on a high note, but um, I'm gonna hand it off to Lou first because I think it's logical for him to sort of talk about what the bid process looks like, what the timeline is uh, for the remainder of the project. Uh, good, good evening. Um, uh, I haven't met uh, much of you, but uh, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll definitely work through this. Uh, excited to be here. Um, uh, when you look at this project, it, overall, we've been talking about an $8 million project. Uh, so, you know, my goal and my job is to make sure I manage your money correctly. Uh, we've, uh, we've been looking to make sure we bring this project in between uh, 5.5 and $6 million. We're talking about 16,000 square feet of space that we're uh, renovating. And then on top of that, we, we have the site work. Um, so talking about planning, we're looking to have bids um, out on the street by the end of next week. We would like to take bids in by the uh, end of October, four week period, qualify the contractors and then make a recommendation uh, to the board uh, to, uh, to move ahead and do a kickoff early November. We kick off the contractors early November, get contracts in place, bonds, insurances. We can start demo uh, by middle of November or December 1st. Uh, ideally, we'd like to hand over the building uh, by uh, early July. Uh, and, you know, and really look to, to, to close out the project by then. Uh, right now, the industry, when you look at the industry, as far as uh, contractors, uh, we're looking to get a lot of people out. There's been a lot of interest in this project. We will be looking to break up the contracts into a site contract, which is plus or minus a half a million dollars GC contract. That's gonna be right around 3 million. Plumbing contract right around three hundred thousand. Uh, HVAC contract that's going to be a little right around eight hundred thousand. And the same thing for an electrical contract right around eight hundred thousand. Um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a nice project. Locally, there's a lot of contractors that have bonding capabilities uh, for this size of project. And we've been uh, soliciting for a while, so I think it's uh, it's going to work out well. What also is creative is here, we can actually work through the winter. The buildings are here, so we can demo, and you know, with temp heat, we can work through. The winter. So, pretty excited. We've uh, also uh, throughout the process, we've done estimating at uh, uh, schematic design design development and construction document phases. Each time we've adjusted the numbers. We've also done a thorough constructability review. Recently, on Monday, we did a good four hour review. Today, Sam and I just went through the architecturals. Um, so uh, really putting out you know, a good tight set of documents. Um, and uh, that's where we're at. Any questions you guys have, uh, definitely let me know. Okay. Thanks, Lou. That was great. Um, so 
I guess I want to end with the whole bonding and band thing that we've been working on. If you remember a year ago or so, when we got this thing going, we, we took a temporary one year ban, a bond anticipation note. And that was for, I believe it was, was it 250? I think it was 250. So that was meant to cover the costs, you know, through the first year. And the plan had always been to take a second one out for a year and then to pay for the rest of the construction. And then at the end of the project, to bond for the, um, the long-term serial bond, which would have been, you know, 20 year bond. So we were working closely with um, Munistat, which is a, like an advisory service for bonds. Um, this guy, Noah Nadelson, who has absolutely gone to the mat for us and done an amazing job. And he had a call with, with all of us, including Neil and Jean, we were kicking it around and we were like, are we ever gonna see interest rates this low? again, ever, you know, I don't know. Why wouldn't we just lock it in and just take the, the, the 20 year bond now? And so we don't have that interest rate risk. And um, we talked about it for about 10 minutes and everybody agreed that that was the way to go. We did a little financial analysis of it. And so because of that, we had to get a, the town has never gotten a credit rating apparently. And so we had to do that. And so, <laughs> so we had to do a call with Moody's credit rating agency went on for like an hour and a half. And um, the feeling there was they were gonna give us an A1 credit, which is good, it's a good credit. But Noah made the argument that we really should get a notch higher, what's called a AA3, which is investment grade credit. And the basis of that was uh, because of the way the town has handled their finances, but also, in, and I was pushing this point, because things have changed in New Paltz just recently with all these new people coming in and all this business activity. so. We put on a dog and pony show, you know, Neil did a fantastic job presenting. I talked for a while about all the real estate things going on around here and the economic uh, things going on around here. And then um, Gene stepped in and just answered all his questions, just batting back the questions. It was, it was fantastic. So lo and behold, they, we were able to achieve the AA3 rating, which is really a great rating. Um, and so we had budgeted originally at 3.5% interest rate on the 20 year loan. Now, in fairness, we, we padded that a little bit because we wanted to, you know, we thought we'd do better than that. We thought we might do three, but then when we were going out to actually sell this bond, Noah was saying, you know what? I think we could get down into the low twos here. And so we, uh, they marketed the bond, sent it out there and we got a 1.61 interest rate for 20 years, which if you do the math, that means we just saved the town $1.8 million over 20 years versus the 3.5 budgeted. And even if you say it wasn't 3.5, it's three, you're still saving a million and a half bucks. So it's, um, that's really, really fantastic. And that credit rating sticks with us and you, know, you got to defend it every so often, but even for other projects, the firehouse, whatever, it's, it's really, really a win. So that's great. And so I'm, I'm the reason I'm telling you about this is because it's fantastic, but also, you know, I'm, I'm hoping we don't have to borrow any more money. For example, if we have to do the landscape, maybe we can get people to donate trees or something. But nevertheless, if it does turn out, we have to go borrow a couple hundred, you know, 200, $300,000 to get this project done correctly. You know, you're still way, way ahead of the game versus the, you know, the budget that we had with the, with the, um, anticip you know, that 1.8 million we saved. So that's my, uh, that's my story and I, I'm happy to take questions or I'm sure um, Sam and I'm sure uh, Lou and Marty would, and Neil and we're all happy to take questions. I just, so go ahead. Well, I wanna say Matt, uh, Matt's being a little modest here with his, um, his role. Um, it, it always helps to have someone who speaks the language um, of the people who are rating you and I think Matt really did a great job of uh, of helping us with that. And I also want to make sure people are aware of the role that Gene played in this, you know, as the town did not always have a comptroller, but you know, when Gene got hired five, six years ago, she started putting in place uh, mechanisms, you know, for, um, you know, keeping costs, you know, making sure there's not fraud, making sure there's not, you know, all sorts of issues and, and we get audited every year. And, you know, some people say, why, why get audited for that? Or why put these, you know, these control measures in place? And, and those are the type of things they look for 
when they do the rating, right? So the audits that Gene has done, um, you know, and, you know, Jean makes a lot of enemies in the town because she's very strict with, with accounting and keeping records, but that's why she does it. Um, and it's because, you know, we were, a, you know, we're not a town in, in Westchester or Long Island, um, but we have a, a light. I think they saw a lot of those, um, that, that level of professionalism um, in New Paltz. So I, I give a lot of credit, I think, to Matt and Marty uh, for being on the committee and to Gene for, I think, you know, really answering their questions. And, you know, like one of the questions they asked, well, do you have a, uh, you know, you know, computer security protocol in place and do you have insurance for that? And we're like, well, yeah, of course. And I, I think I kind of surprised them. So uh, thanks to Gene. Sorry, yeah. now I'll, you guys can talk. Yeah. This is David. Just want to, just want to, you know, Gene has been coming for, for years telling us about, we got to get this audit done. We got to get this. And so I also just want to echo that um, as hard and as she's been on us and saying, Hey, we got to do this. We got to do this. It's, just the payoff is huge to be able to get an investment investment grade uh, credit rating for the town uh, goes way beyond this project. And um, it's just a huge win for us. Thank you. It sounds like this team is really, really working well together. And I just want to thank you all for um, just the great work. And I've been wondering what's been happening and just to see that we're ready to go out for bid is super exciting. I just want to thank you all for all the hard work. And a special, special thanks to Marty, who really, as he was stepping off of the board, uh, really said, I want to stay on this project. And so thank you, Marty, for, for all your hard work on, um, on continuing on with your work, which you, which you always do. Welcome, David. I miss sitting next to you at meetings. Yeah, I want, I want to welcome, or I echo David's comments. Thank you, Marty and Matt and all. It's exciting. It really is exciting. It's, it's going to be a great, great building, especially on the inside. We'll, we'll see what we can do about, about the outside. But, uh, <laughs> I'm, 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 hoping, I'm hoping in a year from now, we'll maybe be sitting in, in that room uh, for our meetings. And uh, yeah, this, this is a real gift that we're giving our community and it, it could not happen without the hard work that you've all done. And I, I'll, I'll join the chorus. I, I actually really, really want to recognize Marty um, because it takes a lot to have a position like this and then kind of want to continue to be involved in a different facet and to do the work and do it in that fashion. And I think it says a great deal about your commitment to this project, but more broadly our community. Um, and it's a great legacy that you're going to have in our community for doing this type of work. So, so thank you all. As well. Thanks, Dan. I kept... I'm coming in totally from the outside and know very little, but um, I looked at the drawings and the drafts and it looks amazing. Um, I'm super excited. And again, I think I, um, you know, echo everybody else on the board that it's just such a wonderful legacy to leave our town um, for people to be able to walk in there and to enjoy the beauty of that building and everything it has to offer as a public service. I think it's something really, really exciting. Um, I do have one very practical question. I, I hope it's not too like stupid a question, but is there a plan to have solar in this at all? There is not a plan to have solar. And the reason is because of the, uh, I think part of it was all the trees that are around there. It doesn't make that easy. And the thinking was that um, it's obviously a big added cost to have the solar and not we know we know that that's an important thing to this community but rather than spend that money on a, a project that we knew was already kind of pushing the tolerance of of what people would put up with budget wise you know we're we can buy green energy everything in there is electric there isn't any the only fossil fuel use in the entire building is um there has to be a generator there has to be a generator when there's a power out uh for the emergency services so we do have, um, and I think it's going to be, I, I think we're still debating whether, I think we're going to bring this, the natural gas line in from the street, but um, that won't be used hardly ever, right? Only in an emergency. And so high efficiency, all electric, and we already are buying our, our energy from, you know, a green source. 
And on top of that, I, I guess I'm not totally on top of it, but I think we're still going to be moving forward with that um, solar farm by the uh, by the old uh, recycle center, right? Our, our Clearwater, are we doing that still? Neil, I can't remember. Still, still in the works. Still in the works, but it's probably going to happen. Whatever the case, we are buying our our electricity from you know qualified so you know renewable uh, sources. So I, I guess that's how we decided to address it. Well, that's great. Thanks so much for that answer. I appreciate it. Um, anything else? If not, um, so we'll go on to, you know, we have a, a resolution advertising for bids for construction renovations at uh, 59 North Putt. Um, it's on the town website. The resolution states that the town of New Paltz in cooperation with its advisors and consultants involved with such project undertake and complete such bid and bidding documents and proceedings in accordance with law so as to give notice to bidders with respect to such projects. Such bids to be opened at the town hall at a date and time determined by the town board and that the supervisor of the town of New Paltz is authorized to execute and acknowledge on behalf of the town such documents as are reasonable and necessary to give full force and effect to the intents and purposes of this resolution regarding the preparation of bid specifications and the advertising of bids. So I'd like to make a motion to pass this resolution. Second, really. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Looks like we're moving. Good to see you all. Good to see you too. We'll be back when we get the when we get the bids. We'll be back and talk that through because that you obviously understand. You just all you authorize here is the right for us to go get the bids. You gotta review yeah. the bids and accept the bids and let us sign the bids, right? So um, we'll be back when, uh, with, with some more information and cross your fingers that these guys are hungry and do, uh, guys and gals are hungry and do, do some good bids for us. Exceptional work. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. I'm going to drop off. Thank Thanks. You. Sorry, to keep, sorry to keep everyone waiting for yeah, this meeting thanks. also. Thank you for waiting. Um, so I have a motion to approve items 2A through 2I, with the exception of D on the consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the, um, so may I have a motion? Uh, I'd like to make a motion to transfer $6,000 from the 2020 budget in-car camera line into the police department computer reserve fund. Second, just, second David. Um, we discussed this at uh, during the police commission meeting. Anyone have anything else? All in favor? Aye. 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 I'd like to uh, make a motion to approve the September warrant in the amount of $382,432.81. Second. Second, David. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, make, I'd like to make a motion to hire Tiffany Claude and Alexa. Alexa Petrolesi as part-time dispatchers. Second. Um, any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, so I sent an email around earlier today about the um, water sewer um, billing and collection. Um, so the finance department has been covering water sewer issues since Chrissy resignation and has requested that the um, that they take over they officially take over the um, the duties um, from what Chrissy did but also from the town clerk's office and so finance would then be responsible for billing collections penalties payment plans and relevy to the tax roll anyone I'd like to make a motion to do that anyone have any discussion yeah right. just just asking this is this is their request, the finance department's request? Yeah, yeah, they've been doing it. Um, and I think they've been solving a lot of the problems and I think they have a really deep knowledge of it. And um, I think they've done a really good job. Um, and so I, I'm in favor of it as well. Gene and I talked about it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I, um, I'll just include that the email that I sent around earlier as into the minutes. So, um, 
So then a, a motion to approve of, of this billing and collection structuring, but then, um, so the money that we're paying Chrissy um, for the rest of the year, uh, I'd like to divide it four ways among the finance department staff uh, to, to pay them for the additional responsibilities. Second. People have any discussions about that? So, Neil, Neil, can you just be more clear about like, are you going to proportionately allocate those dollars to those positions? Yes. By what they're currently paying as a as a percentage of the total, and you're going to allocate those Chrissy's dollars in that in that proportion. Well, you know, I had um, I was we were just going to divide it up, but we could do it differently. If you if you, I'm just asking. That, I'm just I'm, um, ju I'm just asking. I, I was just going to divide it up uh, four ways you know, um, cause they're each taking on different responsibilities. You know, so now some of them are entering the phone. Some of them are doing the billing. Some are doing, you know, looking at the past accounts. Um, but that, that was Gene's suggestion. I hadn't really thought about it much. Um, we could do it by based on, um, you, you know, how much work we think they're doing or, uh, I was I was thinking that they would each move proportionately as a as a percentage of their current salary to the total salary of the department. But if if they have something that feels fair to them, um, I'm all for them doing that that way. Um, okay, I um, why don't we start with the um, we'll divide it up four ways. Um, you know, my my other inclination would be maybe. Um, uh, more a um, uh, progressive amount, you know, the lower, lower paid people get paid more. Uh, but that's, I, uh, but I think we can talk about it. I, I mean, why don't we start with all four, just divide it evenly. That's what the original proposal was. I second that. I'll bring it back if it's different, if I misun misunderstood it. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, let's see. Um, so the, this, the, I talked about recreation. So the football league football is not going to be happening anymore. And, you know, we give some stipends out to the different um, athletic teams in town and uh, football is not going to be happening this year. So Chuck was wondering uh, during the summer camp um, when the Y was at the community center, they had like a, temporary basketball hoops that they would, they would leave there at night. And a lot of the uh, kids who live in the apartments nearby would come over and play basketball in the parking lot um, of the, where the old town hall was. And, uh, and so Chuck was asking if he could go out and buy some basketball hoops uh, because it seems like there's a big need for that. And so it's about $970. He has the money budgeted but not for that item. So instead of giving the money to the football team, which isn't going to happen this year, he was hoping to spend, you know, about a thousand dollars to buy some temporary basketball hoops for that area. And I told him I'd bring it to the board tonight. How are we going to deal with like social distancing with the basketball? Um, you know, I, they're I all touching the basketball. I mean, like all the kids also, would touch the basketball. It's also a contact sport, really. It's they would be closer than six feet at times. Yeah, I don't know if they'd be wearing masks. Um, so you know, if you guys want to wait on it, you know, they... there are better sports for a COVID time. I think maybe it should deserve a little more consideration, personally. Yeah, me too. I would think about that twice. Okay. I mean, is is the village the village basketball court? It, I don't believe that's open. I don't know. Or maybe it is now. I I'm not up on that. Maybe we can ask Chuck to to maybe attend the next meeting and just talk about the reallocation of that and see if he wants to talk about it or make a recommendation and, and, uh, and kind of I mean, address, I guess address we some could, of these issues. I guess we could see if, um, I mean, it, it would depend if it's a lot, if basketball is now allowed as a sport uh, by the state, then I, I think that, you know, we would, we would allow it. So, and then it might also 
hopefully not, but you know, become disallowed again. So. Yeah, and if it's disallowed, then you take the hoops away. What do you do with them after you paid for them, though? You put them inside the building. So just wait for when they could be used again. You mean? Yeah. I mean, Are they I think, freestanding? I mean, they're like mobile basketball hoops. You know, like. So freestanding. Yeah, freestanding. Neil, from what I from what I gather, um, uh, pretty much all sport leagues in the state that are considered high risk for spreading of coronavirus aren't being allowed in football, basketball, hockey, wrestling, volleyball. All of those are not being permitted. Okay, well, it's good to know. Can I ask an yeah. unrelated? Was uh, did I did, was I dreaming, or was was there something about moving this money to lacrosse, the lacrosse league? Uh, for did next I read year. Something about yeah for next that year. That was not that had nothing. To, oh, that's that's the money. That money goes to them next year. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. And so, <laughs> since we weren't spending it this year, Chuck was hoping to to get the hoops, and maybe they wouldn't be used this year during coronavirus but maybe they'd be used next year. Because right now that parking lot just kind of sits empty. It, it, it sounds, I think it'd be great to, to have a place, you know, for them to play yeah. basketball eventually. Well, why not? So yeah, we can, we can have a longer discussion about this. Um, so we'll wait on that. And so the, um, the next is, um, so I'm not sure everyone knows it, but Pat Atkins, our planning zoning secretary is retiring. And we have a letter of resignation from her. Originally it was for the end of September. Um, she, you know, I had a conversation with her today and um, you know, she's willing to extend it for another month till uh, October 23rd, I think. Um, to help us with the transition so we we can bring someone on and there'll be some training um, and you know maybe help out if there's like a gap in for a meeting or something like that and so I said I'd bring that to the board and you know I think it makes a lot of sense to you know if she wants to leave earlier than the end of October that's fine but you know she said if she'd stick around till the end of October I think that um, it would make the, the new hire uh, that much better trained. So, I, I agree, and if we if we find somebody and that person is trained, we can, you know, thank, yeah, thank I, Pat for her service. But between it, yeah, yeah, and I think she'd be willing to leave earlier. I mean, she's doing us a favor by staying around. She really cares about the the job and the projects, and she doesn't want to just leave us in the lurch. And so, I, I think if we do find someone and they feel like they're well trained, I, I think she, you know, she probably wouldn't stick around till the end. So they, I'd like to make a motion to accept her resignation as late as the, um, uh, what is the 23rd of October, I think. Uh, I don't have my calendar in front of me now, but I think the Friday, the 23rd of October. Um, Second, David. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And I think that's all I have. So, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, thank you very much, everyone. Yeah. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye.